Oh yeah. It's day three of the Muddy Fox build. Yeah, it's a little dark and shadowy, isn't it? I'll just turn the light on. I don't know if it's going to make much difference. It might help. Just me tripping over my toolbox. Again, that's better. We can see it. So, just to recap. I've got to knock that crank off again. That shouldn't be too hard now. That should easily tap off with a hammer. And uh, I've got to put those one of those bottom bracket axles in. I'll just have to experiment. Uh, I've actually remembered I may have down in my box of brake stuff some black ones of these. So uh, I've got to go down to the shed later anyway so I'll have a look. And if I have, I'll put those on, because it'll be a lot easier than trying to bodge something up for this rear brake. If I've got two pairs, of course. If not, then I suppose I'm going to have a lot of choice but to make something up for that. So, uh, just a quick introduction, introduction for day three. I'm not really feeling, really feeling very motivated today, but uh, it's got to be done. I can't stay in the in the stand like this forever, can it? So, time to stop being lazy and uh, get on with something. So, uh, as soon as I've made some progress, I'll turn the camera back on. So, talk to you in a okay. So I've made progress, as you can see, that cup sticks out a lot further, as it should, and I can actually screw the lock ring back on. I found some other bearings to put in there as well. So that's all done, that side's bolted on, so I've just got this side to bolt back on. And the uh, jobs are good and on the bottom bracket. I've just got to hope I can find a front radio. Clean the rear one up. Uh, yeah, that's about it for now. Just thought I'd turn the camera back on and give you a little update. And in case you're wondering why I'm uh, making videos and clips like this, it's because. I find it a lot easier and there's a lot of how-to videos out there already so I don't think anyone would really want to uh, watch something that they they already know how to do so I'm just going to make these videos so you can uh, follow progress on the bike side um, fix up unless of course you want me to show to show you uh, how um, things are done. I may do the odd how-to video here and there, but primarily at the moment, especially as, um, that's the other reason, the camera batteries will last a lot longer in short bursts like this, so if I film a short clip like this with progress, with a progress report, and perhaps a little rambling as I'm doing, then the uh, camera batteries will last a lot longer. So, that's it for now. I'm going to get this other uh, crank arm bolted back on. Just, if I turn it over, I don't know how well the camera yet. Yeah, you can just about see the uh, chips on the edge there. That is why you shouldn't use a hammer to get them off. Unless, of course, you have either no other option because you don't have the tool, or um, you're replacing the crank with a new one anyway and you don't care about the old one. And you can go ahead and smash it off with a hammer. So, uh, and the other thing, oh, and the other thing I've got to do is go down to this shed to find a pair of pedals. Because the pair of pedals I bought up, the uh, screw threads, the wrong size. But you do get different sized screw threads. 
I don't actually know what the size threads are. But, uh, I need to go get one, a pair with a uh, bigger thread. So as I've got to go down to the shed later, I'll dig a pair out, hopefully. Oh, and my um, cable outer casing arrived yesterday. I'm not going to use brand new casing on this one. Not when most of the old ones are still reusable. The rule of thumb I have without a casing, while I'm on the subject, is if they haven't split or cracked, or these ends aren't like kinked or bent right over, then you can get away with reusing them. And uh, you might want to check that the cables, even new cables, still travel through these nice and freely. So, of course, you can get dirt uh, grit and water get on the inside of these and that can clog them up. So, yeah, if the cable still moves freely in them and they look in generally good condition like this one, apart from a little rust spot on the ends, which I could clean up with a bit of steel wool, then, uh, doesn't focus very well up close, does it, this camera? There's no focus adjustment on this either. That is the Ask about using a cheap uh, camera like this, but never mind. One day I'll get a new one. So yeah, that's the rule of thumb I use with them um, outer casings. I don't think I've got any crappy ones up here to demonstrate correctly. Oh, yes, I have. You see, this one's got a bit of cable sticking out of it, so that's obviously no good. And. Uh, it's not in the best of condition. What's this one like? That's the thinner one that a lot of factories use for uh, gear cables. I don't use those. I just use the same size throughout. Which I can't remember what the mill is. Are they 4 mil? 5 mil? Something like that. Can't remember without looking it up. Any hoozle, I'll end the video here and uh, get cracked on, I suppose. So, talk to you in a bit. Alrighty then. I've been a bit busy since I last turned the camera off. While I was in the shed, I bought me a box of spare chains up. Found a pair of pedals. Found up the other brake. Just in case I decide to use V brakes. Found a pile of uh, front dralias to try. Depending if I can get one to fit. Keeping in mind that the tube brackets, the brackets that go around the tube um, are different sizes. And a pile of cantilever brakes. Which, uh, some have got springs missing. I'm going to have to see if I can. Uh, make some up. If not, I'll just have to stick to that. Uh, find a couple of seat posts just in case I need them. Got some more out on the landing. And uh, when I've got had enough of uh, doing this bike for today, I've got some sorting out to do. I want to get that blue tub there sorted out. These tubs of nuts and bolts sorted in a better tubs. I've got some uh, about 20 margarine tubs I've saved up to use. Uh, I've got another tub back here to sort. Might do that one if I have enough margarine tubs spare. Just to make my life a little easier when trying to find parts. So I haven't got to like tip that whole tub out just to find one part. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for this progress report. So uh, I'll turn the camera off and get cracking on. And as soon as I've made some more progress on the bike, I'll uh, turn the camera back on. So talk to you. okay, more progress. I decided it would be a lot easier just to go with a pair of V-brakes. 
got your pedals on, got a front failure on, got the seat post and clamp back in, and uh, yep, I did grease that up. Just prevents it from seizing into the frame again. It's not the best seat post, so I may uh, change that in the future. Um, so yep, that's as far as I've got so far. Before I put the chain on, I've got to uh, clean that rear derailleur up. Uh, I think I may get some outers sized up. I think I might just be able to squeeze enough out of there and what I, what was uh, usable from the bike. Those brakes, I'm probably going to take the pads out as there's still some life in them and uh, throw them in my scrap tray. I don't think they're going to be worth keeping. Most of them are broken or got bits missing, so that's what's going to happen to them. Got a front dragon down there, which might work better on my Claude Butler, but that's a project for another day. So, uh, hopefully, by the end of today, day three, I'll uh, have this bloody thing up and running. Three days on a bike. Mind you, I have done uh, jobs in between. And uh, running errands, I've got a running errand layer. I'll leave it a little while before I do that. I've just got to go and order some meds from the doctor's surgery. And if I go while they're busy, they'll only complain. You should bring in your slip. Fill in your slip and put it in the pres repeat prescriptions box. Well, I would, but I've lost the bloody slip. So I've actually got to go into the surgery and uh, up to the desk and ask for some. Unfortunately. I don't know what I did with the prescription slip. Oh, well. Probably accidentally thrown it in the bin. Anyway. Decided to use hexagon bolts on the crank. They're 8mm bolts. 8mm hexagon bolts, that is. Just using them because they were floating around in my box of bottom bracket stuff, so... I thought, why not? Uh, I've got to find a cable clamp for that, which will probably, probably be in that little box there. Or I might have one in another yellow margarine tub I've got kicking about in, in the kitchen, I think. So, uh, time to turn the camera off and uh, crack on with some more stuff. So, I'll talk to you in a bit. Oh, yeah, back again. Uh, well, clean the driver up so it looks, it's not perfect, but it looks much better than it did. Uh, and I've got a chain on it. Yeah, the wheel is not staying in there, I'll just use that to uh, size the chain up. So, I need to go down to the shed to uh, pick a wheel up from down there. Need to uh, make sure that front dryer is all lined up properly. And I'm going to sort the wheels out, get the brake pads in. I can't really uh, set the brake pads up without the wheels in, so I can't set the brakes up without the brake pads in, and I can't set the brake pads up or the brakes up without the wheels in either. So uh, either way, I think my next job is to sort the wheels out before I continue with anything else. I could feed all the cables through, but then I'll have cables flailing around everywhere and getting in the way. So next job, wheels. So I'm going to run down to the shed and try and find a rear wheel. Something half decent at least. I might... Oh, actually, I might have something up in this cupboard. Well, anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off and uh, talk to you in a bit. Hey, back again. 
this time wheels are in pumped up just hope they stay pumped up uh, brake pads are in and a clamp up as well so uh, I've been a bit busy now I think it's ready for the last part now and that's to uh, fit on all the cables and set everything up so uh, that's the progress so far I think that dryer is slightly off possibly no, that actually looks alright Yeah, I found a couple of black wheels or black rims they were just the first ones I uh, grabbed out of my shed I thought I'd throw on this one it's actually not looking too bad apart from the old chip and the paintwork I may actually keep this one for myself that's a off-roady hackaboat bike there's no way I'm taking my Claude Butler off-road off ok uh, uh, that seat probably won't stay on there but it's better than the one that came off and it's probably a lot more comfortable than that skinny one down there I think that one's actually more of a racing bike seat, looking at that. So, given the choice, I'd rather have one with a couple of little holes in it than one that's going to hurt my ass. So, I'm pretty short on bike seats at the minute. And I've got some old style spring seats. I don't think that would suit the bike. So, that will do for the time being. Uh, Um, 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 um. I think I'll get away with that Duralia set as it is. See, the problem I've got with my Claude Butler, I've just built the chain, scraping on this bottom bit here. But if I lower the Duralia down so it doesn't scrape, the dryer then doesn't clear the top chain ring so not sure how I'm going to deal with that I may end up putting a small crank on the Claude Butler like this one uh, I haven't got anything decent to put on up though so that'll be a future project it's rideable it'll do for the time being until I can perhaps afford new crank but I think because of the Dralia design I've put on it I mean I don't think that Falcon is a different design but uh, I don't think that's going to go around the seat tube and then I've got another one of these which is exactly the same design as what I've got on the Claude Butler at the moment so uh, yeah this is actually like a universal one you can put this on a bike where the cable pulls from the top or from underneath because if you're going to bring it in from the top up here where my thumb is it comes, it'll go around through this little notch here where my finger is and around that little run and then clamp onto there and of course if you come up from underneath you can just clamp it straight up so you could use it both ways which is what I've got on the Claude Butler at the minute so I think the easiest option would be to put a slightly smaller crank on or chain set, crank, crank set, that's the word
Hello. <laughs> right, so, I'm just looking at the clock. I don't want to go down to surgery too early. Well, I suppose I'm going to have to face the rush hour, rush hour traffic sooner or later, so it's now 5 to 4. There are boats. A bit before that. Uh, so, um, 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 I say um a lot, don't I? I'm going to turn the camera off here. Feed some cables on. Perhaps set the brakes up so they're done out of the way. And, uh, go down to the doctor's surgery and order my medication before I forget again. So, uh, I'll turn the camera off and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Ta-ta. Okay, I've just got back from the surgery. I haven't done any more to this, but, uh, I want to talk about something anyway. I used my silver Viking Targa full suspension mountain bike. And uh, first gear was fine, second gear was fine, third gear was fine, fourth gear was fine, and then I get into fifth gear. It's a seven speed free wheel, so I got in the fifth. Got to the hill that I have to ride up to get to the surgery, and uh, crunch. The chain slipped. So I eased off on the pedals. Gave it another shot, putting some effort behind the pedalling, and crunch, it slipped again. And it did that two or three times. So uh, I've got a feeling that fifth gear is uh, had it on that free wheel. So I'll have to change that. But it made me look at this one. I don't know how well you can see that. But if you look at six on here, these teeth on sixth gear are like needle points compared the teeth on the others. Now that's a good indication that six gear is had it, so I'm going to have to change the free wheel on this one. But uh, I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'll do that once I've got the bike sorted out. I'll we'll probably put this free wheel on. Uh, that's what the teeth are supposed to look like on a free wheel nice square flat edge. If they've gone to needle points where you notice your chain is slipping in certain gears not not other gears then I'd check the teeth on your freewheel because you may find um, some of them some of your gears are no longer with a flat edge. So yeah, if your gears are like uh, Gear teeth are done like needle points, like they have on six gear on here. I'm not sure how well you can see that behind the chain. Uh, if I lift the chain, I oh, can get a better view of it there. See, it's this one. Number six, one up from the bottom. Like needle points, so. I know for a fact, as soon as I get this bike sorted and then take it for a test ride and drop that into sixth gear, I'm not going to get any grip with the chain. That's just going to slip. So, I'll have to change that before a test ride, but I'm not going to worry about it right this minute. I'm going to uh, carry on getting the cables threaded in and gear set up and brakes set up and... I'm not sure what he wants, he's meowing for something. You know, I know for a fact he's got food in his dish. Uh, yep, anyway, I'll talk to you again in a little while. Okay, that's the brakes sorted. Um, front brakes on, perfectly fine. Rear one. It's a bit spongy for my liking, but uh, I did get it to work. And uh, that's how I did it. Used an old brake lever cable adjuster, put it on the end of this tube, put a bit of uh, plastic tubing in there just to protect the cable, 
little bit of uh, application for a brake noodle. And voila, one brake. But uh, like I said, it's a bit spongy for some reason. Should do. I'll stop this. That's all I need to worry about. So, uh, just thought I'd update you on uh, how I solved the rear brake problem. That's why I keep loads. And I have got loads of uh, cable adjusters of all sorts, shapes, sizes, and ages. Some for old brake levers. Some plastic ones for old brake levers, and more modern ones. And so, yeah, that's how I fixed or solved that problem. Didn't have a cable stop on there for the outer, so I made one. That doesn't look too untidy either, I don't think, so I'm happy with that. Tires are still holding air. That's also good. So, last job, do the gears. So, uh, I'll talk to you once I've I don't know, maybe done the rear gears or done them both, so, uh, well, I'm back for the last time, at least for day three. Gears are all connected up, they work. As you can see, it's getting dark outside. Uh, I've just been on another bike ride. <coughs> Testing out the Viking. Haven't fixed it, but, uh, a uh, fire broke out in an, in an industrial building in town. So uh, I went and have a little nose, if you like. I need to watch the fire crews, because I do have an interest in the fire service. Uh, nothing serious, just a rubbish fire inside a building. So uh, no one was hurt, thankfully. Um... So yeah, back to the bike. It's done, apart from that free wheel, which I'll do later on at some point. It's not important. The rest of the gears are still intact and should still work. I'm more likely to use the Viking, so I think I'll save that 7-speed free wheel I've got somewhere over there on the sofa for um, the Viking. If it wasn't getting dark, I'd have whacked it on now. Uh... So, I don't have any more bikes to do, so this will be probably the last of the bike videos. Nemo's asleep in his little box bed. Of all the things to like sleep in, he chose a box with a towel in it. Oh well, if he's happy, I'm happy, so... Um... Yeah, I need to... Oh. I mustn't forget, I've got to put some air in these tyres. I only put enough in there to see if they um, would hold air and won't go flat. So, uh. Oh, sorry, I thought my front wheel was in there on, on the wonk, but it's not. It's just the angle I'm sitting at. So, you know, until I get more bikes in. Whether if I'm lucky enough to get some freebies again, or if I buy a couple dirt cheap. Yeah, I doubt there'll be any more bicycle videos unless I can think of anything to uh, talk about, like tips. And so, well, tips for some of the things and some of the methods I find easy. I might do some of them sort of videos one day. Uh, what's that back wheel over there? Oh, yeah, that one's got to go on the scrap trailer, that back wheel. Uh, I think that's it. I'm not sure if I'm going to like the rear brake on this or not, because I don't like spongy feeling brakes. So uh, that might be something to sort out later. 
But the gears are functioning, at least when it's on its stand. Sometimes I find they don't like to function when you ride them, so you still have to fine tune them. Uh, I can do that outside. I may do that before it gets too dark. I'm not actually sure where I'm going to put the bike though. Or I may save it till tomorrow. Because uh, I'll have to bring it back upstairs anyway because I've got no room out in the shed. So, I may actually end up having to sell one or two bikes just to make a bit of room. I'm not sure which ones I'd sell yet. One of these, either this one or the black one, will get sold. It depends which one I like better. Because I do want to keep at least one of them for um, off-road trail use. Just for Weaver's Way tracks and whatnot. So I prefer to use a um, more robust bike, like a steel frame. I don't, I don't know. I just don't. Personally, I don't feel comfortable using an aluminium frame off road. I just don't feel uh, strong enough. I could be wrong. It could be perfectly strong enough, but that's just, just me and my personal preference. I just prefer a uh, steel bike like this if I was going to go bouncing off road. Probably a good idea because I'm not exactly a small chap, as you've seen in the videos. I've got, mm, pardon me, I've got quite a gut on me. No, that's all I've got on me, weirdly enough. Perfectly healthy, I can ride a bike perfectly fine without getting out of breath. I can ride to my mum's and she's about eight, nine miles away when I've done that trip. I only really do long trips when the weather's nice, though. It's not nice doing long trips in crappy weather. Um, I did notice something interesting on this frame. Apart from that little threaded screw hole there, there's nowhere to mount a mudguard or a reflector or anything like that. That does go all the way through, though, that hole. So, uh... Actually, I won't be putting mud guards on it, will I? Lights and reflectors won't be a problem because they can go around there, provided I don't have to lower the seat anymore, or on this tube here. I do like that design. I don't know why I just like that fork design they've done on here. Hmm. So I'll take it for a test ride tonight. I've got to go downstairs anyway to put everything back in the shed. Then I suppose I better have a clear up on there and put everything aside that's got to go back downstairs. Such as those and that case. And not that case yet because I've got to do some sorting out. I forgot I had this case. Let's just turn it light on. Better clean this table down, as it's also my Lego table for my Lego channel. Got some various bits in here. I've got all these um, nut, nuts and bolts for V brakes, V brake pads. These ones, the threaded ones. That's what all this is, and all the spaces and whatnot for them. Some valves. Ah, he says. I've been looking for some of these. They're um cage bottle cage screws. I've got some um holes on the cord butler I want to put them in. And if I've got enough I may replace them on this one as well because they're a bit rusty. Don't really matter. Not if I'm gonna use it as a rough terrain bike. Uh, spare valves. Some uh, bushes for suspension, re suspension bushes. old style valves. You don't get these ones anymore in here. <laughs> I think that's about all she wrote for that. Yeah. That's some, actually, now that's a bearing, isn't it? That's a bearing. That plastic bit is a bush. Yeah. Get it right. Duh. <laughs> some nuts 
some bolts in there. I'm not actually sure what they all are. I'll have to turf that out and have a look. So, it's almost time to shut the camera off. I don't think there's anything else I want to mention. I want to find a seat for my Claude Butler downstairs, the blue one, because that's a perfect one for distance riding. But I nicked the seat off that to put on the one up here, on my uh, mountain bike Claude Butler. So the one I've Claude Butler got downstairs is like a hybrid. There we go. Yeah. That's this. Here's the proper Claude Butler seat. It's got the CB logo on it. So, uh, got to find a seat for the other Claude Butler. I didn't intend to have two Claude Butlers, it just sort of happened. The hybrid I've got downstairs was offered to me for 20 quid. So, I took it. And, uh, well, you know the story with this one anyway. So I won't go into details again. Uh, I actually got a black cord. cord. I'll try that again. Claude Butler Frank sitting on the shelf in the shed downstairs. Try saying that when you've had a few drinks. That'd be a good challenge. Uh, a few bike bits over here. I've got that seat. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. I might put that on the uh, Muddy Fox through there. It might look a bit daft with the uh, being so big and bulky, but I've got a big fat ass anyway, so. <laughs> it's actually quite clean. I must have got that from Mr. Biggles. So I'll put that on there so I don't lose it. One of these days I'll go through that closet. Maybe I can, I don't know, I'm bad to bear. I'll try that. I'll start again, shall I? Maybe I'll turn the camera on and film that. That sort of beige tray with the red box on, that's got some bike parts in it. I'll need to go through. There's a racing handlebar down there, an old one. A scrap, I just want to take the gear, the, the brake lever off of that. Dirty laundry, box of cars. I'm getting sidetracked now, I'm rambling. And you can't see it, but the cat has thrown up some of his food behind my bike wheel on my Lego street, so I've got to clean that up as well. Bless him. Never mind, that's not his fault. I don't blame him. I just wish he'd throw up in his tray. Does everything else at this try. Never mind. Vomit is easy enough to clean up. And I'll just wash the plate under the water under a tap. Uh, what we've gone on for 11 minutes. So I think I'll round up the video here then. A bit of rambling for you in it as well. Oh, I left this bit on just in case I decide to revert the brakes back to normal if I do keep it because that was my original plan that's why I put that on there because I was going to put the original sort of style brakes on it but I didn't have any suitable ones to put on it so I haven't said that I did find a spring for one of the black ones so if I find the other spring I'll keep a set of black ones and I might change them on this it's a definite maybe. Uh, I've only got the one spring. I'm no, sorry, three springs. I've got one missing. On a black set. It might even work better than these V brakes on here. Uh, but uh, as far as functionality goes, it does work. Oh, that's what I'll mention while I've got the camera on. I'll save doing another video. I've been doing this... Got to be over 15 years now. Mostly self-taught, apart from what Dad taught me. Because obviously when I was a kid, you'd always go to your Dad when your bike breaks. 
Dad, my bike is broken again. My gears don't work. <laughs> Good old Dad will come along and fix it for you. And I used to watch him and help him. And I used to sort of start doing the basic stuff. But then, of course, friends started to come to me when I started to get really interested. Can you do my brakes? They don't work. My gears are skipping. Can you have a look at them? And I'd be like, yeah, bring the bike over. But uh, and I didn't start selling bikes, I don't know, until about 2006. And it's literally just as and when I get hold of some. It's not something I go out of my way to do. It's not something I do as a business. It's just uh, if I pick up a couple of freebies that are worth fixing up like this, I'll do them. If I see someone selling some bikes cheap, I might buy them, do them up and sell them on. Like I said, I don't go out of my way to make a point of doing it. Uh, but uh, I first started out selling them. Actually, in fact, I'm still going to let this video go on anymore. I'm going to end it. And I'll tell you the whole story in a separate video. Which I'll probably make straight after this and, I don't know, upload some other time in the future. Near future. Very near future. So, I'll say goodbye for now. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Any comments and questions, please leave them in the comments below. And... Uh, I'll talk to you later.